Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optobotomus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Titans Return, Deluxe Class Autobot Breakaway, and Autobot Throttle. For the package, you got a really cool image of Breakaway with Throttle kind of detaching from them there on the back card, as well as the Transformers text and the Generations logo. On the back of the package, you got images of Breakaway in his robot and vehicle mode, as well as a brief read-up that says with the Decepticons rising, the Autobots power up with Titan Master partners to stop them. Autobot Thrall has a power source that boosts the speed of Autobot Breakaway, enough to make him uncatchable. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. Okay, so here we have Autobot Breakaway open up and out of his packaging. Now, right up front, Breakaway here is a straight up repaint of the Wave 2 Deluxe Chrome Dome. But Breakaway here is actually based on the G1 Power Master Getaway. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really care too much about the Power Master figures. Now, the only one that I have in my collection is Power Master Optimus Prime, so I don't have that G1 to kind of show you. But pain wise here, Breakaway actually does a pretty good job of homaging that original Getaway figure. Starting off first with, uh, in the original, that his name was actually Rev, and like I said, uh, he was a, a Power Master, so what you would basically do would transform Rev and actually plug him into the chest there, and that would unlock the uh, transformation gimmick. But now he's a Titan Master, and in terms of a uh, robot mode here, doesn't really look like the original G1 did. As you can see, you just got some uh, blue molded uh, arms, legs, and the head. Uh, pretty decent detail. Uh, you're just completely lacking really any paint applications. And then when you transform him, you just fold his head. Now, actually, the head looks pretty decent, although the G1 actual helmet and everything was a darker blue, kind of like the rest of the body here on him. Uh, but he did have the yellow face, which does look pretty nice. Comes to Breakaway himself, uh, you do have the same weapons that Chrome Dome did. They plug here on the top, which works because uh, that original uh, getaway figure, you could actually do that as well. But the overall paint detail is very, very similar. The original had the uh, red windows. He had a yellow stripe here across the top. Uh, the back section here was actually a giant spoiler, but it was painted blue. So it's nice that they actually had that here as well. And then uh, getaway also had like some side striping kind of similar to what you have here with the Autobot logo in there. Same here with the actual top. So so paint wise, they actually did a pretty good job on here. One thing that I, I know that my buddy Grim from Grimm's Toy Show always complains about this is I do not have any understanding why they decided to go with like this smoky clear loose plastic here for the wheels. It's like they said, well, in order to have it full solid black, we need to put 1000 parts per million in the paint to make it a solid black color. But to save money, we decided to only put 200 parts per million, which gives it this smoky kind of look and hey that looks kind of cool but it doesn't make any sense and i i do gotta agree with my buddy grim when he says that that does kind of look cheap i'm really not a very big fan of that but uh, like i said i don't have any real attachment to getaway so at the end of the day this is probably a figure that i'm not o overly impressed with but the mold itself is still really good and I do give Hasbro a lot of credit in terms of making the paint detail really do nicely homage that original G1 toy. Now, much like that Chrome Dome figure, you can open this section up, you can take Throttler, you can fold him in here, kind of have him in a little seated kind of pose, and you can put him in there, you can have him drive. You can also have him fit on the cannon itself. Now, one thing that's really strange is I, I really have to push very, very hard on it to actually get him to sit in there these arms are really stiff too so get these up here with like my one little fingernail uh normally you, you just put it in here and it sits in here very well but like this one i have to really push to get that tab to kind of lock in there but when you do it sits in there perfectly fine just gotta do a little bit of force to get it in there but uh pulling that out you had that same kind of functionality here now, because the transformation is exactly the same as Chrome Dome, we are going to go ahead and skip it. If you need any help whatsoever with the transformation instructions, my Titans Return playlist is available to you, where you can look up my review for Chrome Dome and get any help that you may need. But utilizing some of that good old-fashioned Optobotomous movie magic, we're going to go from Breakaway looking like this... So looking like this, and again, to actually complete the entire transformation, you take Throttler, you rotate him around like so, and then you just tuck him into the little port right there, and there you have the completed look for the guy, and homage-wise, he still looks really very good. I do think that in robot mode here, a lot of the paint details are a little less 
homage than the ones that were in his actual vehicle mode, but they're still basically there. Coming in to take a closer look, like I said, obviously the head is a little bit different in terms of the overall helmet. Uh, the original G1 had a lot more of this kind of dark blue throughout the entire thing. Uh, the chest is fairly decent in that this in the original G1 toy was like the windshield, which obviously now is the back section here and then uh, the yellow bit right here. But I like how they updated it to kind of make it look like a different part. Yep, still maintaining the overall same color scheme. That looks pretty good. But then when you come down here to the legs and everything, it gets a little bit different. Like these were, you know, also red painted, but they're blue now. I guess you could kind of say that he's got those little shoulder pieces in the uh, original. He had like these little shoulder bits that like flared out and everything. But overall, I mean, still really good looking figure. I just, uh, like I said, I don't really have any kind of attachment to the character or even the original G1 toy. So it's not something that I can get overly excited about. I, I do like the, the mold that they use for him. I still think it's very solid. Uh, now for his articulation, the head is on that little ball joint that the uh, Titan Master actually has. So you get a pretty decent range of motion there. Uh, the shoulders here are on these hinges. You can hinge those uh, in and out like that. And then the main section of the actual shoulder is a ball joint. So you get a nice range of motion there. You do have a swivel at the upper part of the bicep. You have an elbow hinge. Uh, I guess you could kind of say that he's got a wrist hinge as well. Mostly just due to the transformation. He rotates here at the waist, which is also part of the transformation. But it, it does function very nicely as a point of articulation. Uh, the ball joints here at the hips allow uh, a nice full range of motion. Motion. He rotates at the upper part of the thigh. He's got a bend here at the knee. And then I guess you could kind of say that his toes can flex a little bit because they, they actually can. So overall, all the articulation that you would expect is still in this figure. You just got a completely different repaint. If you are a fan of that you know, original Power Master figure, I think that you're, you'll enjoy this. You know, he does have that kind of blocky car kind of look. I, I just, I think that as Chrome Dome, he works a lot better. I think that that was the intended figure for this mold, obviously. And then, you know, repainting them, they were like, hey, we can make a breakaway or getaway out of him. So let's do that too. And I think it works. I just think that he's a much more minor character that I don't think a lot of you know old school fans are really going to care too much about. He's a very niche kind of figure, I guess. But overall, still really good actual mold. And I do like him just for that. Then bringing in the old tape measure, as you can see, as a deluxe size figure, breakaway comes in at about five and a half inches tall. Overall, a pretty fun figure, but one that I think is going to have very limited appeal. Younger ones will probably appreciate him, but not necessarily know where he comes from. But the plastic quality is still really good. The mold itself is really very nice. And beside the fact that I don't have much attachment to the character, the toy is a really good one. So if Breakaway here is a figure that you'd like to add to your collection, he will be hitting various retail locations fairly soon. So good luck and happy hunting. Or as always, there's Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on this guy as well as the rest of the new Transformers Titans Return figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video to please like and share it. It goes a long way towards helping me out. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you never miss out on a future review of mine. Or if you're already subscribed, be sure to click on that little bell on my homepage and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other. You're a